In this week's video, I show you how a conjoint nerve root looks on a MRI of the lumbar spine and how you can identify this anomaly. So let's start and let's have a look. Hi, my name is Dr. Christoph Acton. I'm a musculoskeletal radiologist and in my YouTube channel, I teach you MSK radiology with a special focus on MRI. Now, if you're new to the channel, go make sure you join the new MSK community that I started. There is a contest running where you have to give this little buddy here a name. Uh, so you find the link right here. So go over there, post a name for this little skeleton back here. So on Halloween, we will basically then reveal its new name or have a little vote. And the winner can win 30 minutes of one-on-one -on -one coaching in musculoskeletal MRI with me personally. So that should be uh, fun. So here is the first case, and this is the MRI of a lumbar spine. We have the sagittal T2 and the axial T2 or the lower segments here. So when we scroll through here, just slowly, you don't really see much happening. Um, you know, no, no obvious finding. Uh, unless you really know what to look for. But there are some things that can put us off here already. Let's start at the top here. So the one thing that you can realize here, which is something that might be associated with this, is that the nerve roots here on the right hand side, they are more clumped together as opposed to this side. So this is the L5 and S1 nerve root on the left side, and this is L5 and S1 on the right side. And they are more closely together than on the other side. And the reason for this is because these two nerve roots, they are going out of the dural sac together. You know, uh, down here, you can see there's a wide opening and they both exit through the same hole, basically. But then L5 runs through the foramen and the S1 runs through its own foramen. So every nerve root goes through its own foramen. That's why on a sagittal, when we go here, you can see L5, S1, every nerve root is running in its own foramen. But they exit the dural sac together through this hole. Now, why do we know that this is not the normal situation? You can always compare the other side, and that's the beauty of this uh, spine, right? So when we go up to the level of L, uh, let's go L4, L5, you can see L4 exits the you know, the dural sac on both levels at the same level. It goes out here, there, 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 very symmetric. But then we go down to L5, S1, and you can see how the L5 nerve root exits the dural sac here on this level. So pretty high up here. And that's also why we can see that here. So you can see how the nerve root comes from top to bottom and then you know, here, top to bottom, and then goes out to nerve foramen, right? So it goes out here, whereas the S1 is still within the dural sac and L5 is already out of, out of it. Whereas on the other side, they are still clamped together, L5 and S1, they go together here. And this is where we have this distorted corner here of the dural sac, which is, there's, you know, it should actually be something like this, similar like on the other side, but it's, you know, it's kind of like well-rounded here because there is no exit of nerve roots at that level. So that's one of the things. And then the other thing is you can see how the nerve is running pretty much parallel here. So we can see it on one slice where the nerve goes through the foramen in one section. Whereas normally we see it coming from top to bottom obliquely running. That's why we always have one section of the nerve imaged. That's also another sign that we can see. Now this stupid dog is barking outside. I hope it's not too disturbing. Anyways, so yeah, so globe together here then together out of the sack and then this parallel thing and this distorted corner so these are the signs that we can see here on this image now something else to realize also here on the sagittal we can see it looks abnormal we can see how they are really coming out here this is the s1 whereas the l5 has more like a parallel course coming straight to us and then only goes down here whereas on the other side you can see how there is no connection between these two nerves. The L5 goes out normally and the S1 goes out uh, down here. Uh, interestingly, you can also see this on a coronal, as you can imagine. Uh, this is probably even one of the better ways to illustrate this, unless you are quite unlucky with your sections. So L4 roots, both sides, symmetrical, go out, foramen, all good. L5 here. So this is the L5 root. It goes out here, but the L5 on the left side starts a little bit higher. So this is not the greatest example here. But then when we go down to this level, you can see how there is through this big common sac where, you know, this is kind of like a wide opening here. 
where we have the S1 coming down here, there is nothing going down here on the other side because S1 only goes down this way on the left side, which is the normal situation. But here there is no, you know, can, no hole in the dual stack for the S1 because the S1 root already exited a level above and then goes down outside of the dual stack distally. So that's what we see here on these oblique ones, uh, coronal ones. Okay, so let's have a look at a other patient. Uh, so D2 axial. So again, let's start at the top. So what we can see here again is a similar thing. We can see the nerve roots here are scattered more and here they are clumped together. So we can already expect on which side we have to be careful and looking. And this is actually again the right side, right? So, and also there seems to be more nerves than previously, so maybe three together, whereas the other ones are down here. So this is now the level of L4, uh, where L4 exits the neuroforamen on both sides, same level, no asymmetry regarding the corner, all good, you know, we see the nerve on both sides, always the same, no parallel nerve roots running. Now, when we go down, we are going now down to the L5, where L5 exits the sec which is right here and here so you can see l5 s1 s2 and here everything is just one big you know collection of nerve roots here not separated as opposed to the other side because they all go through the same big hole here and you can see again how we can see l5 as a parallel nerve root here running very parallel and then we have s1 going down here and S1 going down here. So they are still all together in the same sac. Whereas here S1 leaves separately, S2 leaves separately, and here everything is just combined with each other. And again, we have this asymmetry regarding the, you know, the sac. It just looks asymmetric. Here it's rotated like this, you know. We don't see a bulging or like a, like the exit hole here the sleeve and this is also a conjoint nerve root. So conjoint nerve roots mean the nerves join together and they leave the dural sac together but then the most common variant is they exit through the, their own respective neuroforamen. So this is actually again what's happening mm -hmm. right here in this case. Now let's have a look at the coronals here again. Um, let's see whether we can identify this uh, purely on a coronal. So we can see when we start at the level here, L4, L5, you know, everything is fine. Even at the level above, everything is fine. Symmetric, symmetric, symmetric. Now here, it's not symmetric. So you can see the exit here on L5 at this level, whereas L5 only goes down on the right side on this level. Then also S1, you know, goes down here and S2 goes down here. But there is no hole for S2 on the other side and also the L5, it's just one broad hole here where everything goes through. This is also why it's all much broader here. S1, and then when you try to find S2, which is this one here, you can see when you follow S2 up, goes up here, up here, and here it's not there, right? There, there, there. So it S2 goes in here too, whereas on the other side, S2 only exits here. So conjoint nerve root here of L5, S1, S2 on the right side, and on the, in the previous case, it was just L5 and S1. So, so why do we even care, right? Uh, why we even bother with a variant like this? First of all, it's not so rare. It's present in about two to four percent, depending on whether it's an anatomic study, surgical study, or whatever. But if you read 100 spines, you have a good chance of seeing maybe two or three or four, depending, you know, uh, on your prevalence in your region. But this is not something you will never see. And it has two basically points that are important. First of all, they can be symptomatic by themselves. So there are case reports where patients with conjoint nerve roots actually show symptoms in that specific nerve uh, innervation. So basically radiculopathy of the corresponding nerves, because I assume it, you know, I, I'm not an expert in, in these things, the clinical side of things, but 
they might be more susceptible to traction, they are less mobile, for example, etc. Or, you know, that might be leading to symptoms, but not all of them are. So there needs to be a clinical correlation as well. And some people do actually do surgery for these to kind of like release it. And I don't really know how it would work from a practical point of view, but, you know, there are some case reports about these things. And I'll put some in the description down below if you want to read about it. But the other thing is, and this is also more important, I think it can have surgical complications. So if a surgeon is not aware of this anomaly, and let's say there is a disc herniation somewhere, maybe, I don't know, maybe there. So there would be a disc herniation and also on the other side. So, and then they go in, but they don't really realize that there is a conjoint nerve root. They might actually, you know, damage the corresponding nerve root during surgery because they were not aware of this anomaly. So we have to be... Um, accurate in our you know recognition of that variant as it's the most common variant of the nerve roots and the most common segment the most frequently affected segment is L5S1 but let's have a look at a uh, publication so here's an article from 2008 in skeletal radiology and they specifically looked on how we can identify these conjoint nerve roots on a purely axial MRI because not all institutions are actually scanning axials uh, like this where you have a full stack over the whole segment but some people just do disc levels and then you always have this gap in between and it makes it harder to actually see the appropriate course of the nerves. So they looked at different signs but first have a look here at the schematic what is a conjoint nerve root so you can see normal situation like we saw in our case then like a big common uh, exit hole where two nerve roots or more exit through the same uh, level or the same hole in the dural sac but then leave in the corresponding uh, neuroforamen right so this is the situation we had and there are now different signs we can use first of all the corner sign which indicates that there is an asymmetry also in the, in the edges where you would normally have this I think we saw that. We'll go back to the case here in a second. So that's called the corner sign. Basically an asymmetry morphology of the anterolateral corner of the dural sac. Then the parallel sign where you can see the nerve root more parallel as opposed to this obliquely running structure that's going from top to bottom in an oblique manner. And if you do a sagittal or like an axial, you always see parts of the nerve running from top to bottom. But if the nerve exits a little bit lower, it has a more or less parallel course to the axial plane which then explains why we can see the nerve root as a parallel structure or like the full length of the nerve root in the foramen in one section so that's the parallel sign now the fat crescent sign is something i was not able to show you because this is really um you know not not well i was just unlucky with my cases or that but that's an additional sign where you have a little bit of fat interposed between you know the conjoint nerve root and the asymmetric sac so we can have a look at this again now not all of these signs are the same quality but let's have a look at the conclusion or the images that they show you here in this uh, publication first of all this asymmetry here that's the corner sign and this parallel nerve is the parallel sign and you can see how you only see a bit of the nerve normally but here you can see all in one go same here their asymmetry there so these are the corner sign and the parallel sign then here they show the fat crescent sign which just is fat crescent here between the root basically and the tackle sac this is something and it's not present in our case but that seems to be another sign here again fat crescent sign um, yeah asymmetry parallel sign and fat crescent sign basically all together all three of them okay so let's have a look here briefly at this text here most common nerve root anomaly so this is an anatomic variant most commonly here so let's go maybe down to the bottom you know lack of preoperative awareness of conjoint nerve root may lead to iatrogenic root injury during you know decompression and discectomy etc and these three signs on routine axial l spine mri like the corner sign the fat crescent sign and the parallel sign they seem to be suggestive of a conjoint nerve root and yeah so that's really that yeah so let's go back to our images and see where we can identify these signs so here we have the parallel sign which is the nerve root in one plane we can see the asymmetry of the dual sac so maybe even better here so you can see how it's just not the same on both sides uh, when it comes to the fat crescent sign i don't really 
think we can see it here nicely um, because there is not really a typical fat crescent sign and the cases that they showed they had less space available because there was some discarnation etc but yeah something to look out for but i think what they didn't describe is this was this globular uh, asymmetric running down of the nerve roots in the tacal sac some levels above because they have to have a different course when they are going through different exit holes compared to the other side and this was actually present in both of our cases here so this is the first case this is the second case and you can see it's a similar situation here combined together combined together and running apart running apart here then going l5 s1 out of the thing parallel sign here l5 s1 and s2 all together and then that all right that's it so as you can see, this is something we can identify on MRI and we should. So I hope you like this video. And again, if you haven't already, make sure you give the video a like because it helps me out in the YouTube statistics and also make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you want to have more training and get just your next level in MSK radiology, also make sure you go over to my homepage. It's www.acton.org. This is where you'll find more uh, about me and how I help other radiologists to increase their confidence and speed in MSK radiology with the virtual MSK fellowship program, which is a program suitable for all radiologists that want to kind of like go to the next level in MSK radiology. So there are a couple of videos on my YouTube channel. So if you just search for YouTube uh, MSK fellowship, you should actually be able to find it. And yeah, with that, that's it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.